Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot uh, free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. We observe silence for self-examination. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his, forgive, for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant us the spirit to hear your word and to know the one thing needful, that by your word and spirit we may live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today, the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, is from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, beginning with verse 1. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up his eyes 
He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and bowed himself to the earth, and said, O Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree, while I bring a morsel of bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah, and said, Quick, three sheaves of the fine flour, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and, tender and good, and gave it to the young man who prepared it quickly. Then he took curds and milk and the calf he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading of the psalm found in your bulletin insert, Psalm 27, read responsibly by whole verse. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, see my face, my heart says to you, your face, Lord, bless you. Hide not your face from me, turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Teach me your ways, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they realize that they have I believe that I should look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The epistle for this day is found in the book of Colossians, chapter 1, beginning with verse 21. You who once were alienated and hostile in mind doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body by flesh, of flesh by his death, in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not sifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and by which I, Paul, became a minister. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church, of which I became a minister. And according to the stewardship from God that was given for me, to me for you to make the word of God fully known. The mysteries hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all this his en energy that he powerfully works within me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Please rise for the gospel reading. according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a young uh, a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, begotten of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the Gospel lesson, the story we love of Mary and Martha, Luke chapter 10. The very ending of the story where Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Here ends our text. Dear Christian friends, I'd say about the last 10 years of their life, my mom and dad had a one-a-day life. We're not talking vitamins. We're talking, what do you do? Call mom on Sunday. Call mom on Sunday and say, so mom, what's up this week? Well, Danny, Monday we have an eye doctor appointment. I'm going in at, to Perm at 9. you got to remember, Perm is 9 miles away. And if the appointment's at 9, they're going to be there by 8.30, worried that they're late. These are my parents. All right? Now, if you're foolish enough to say, oh, by the way, the eye doctor appointment will take no more than 45 minutes. By 10, they're back home on the farm. Okay? If you're foolish enough to say, so what are you doing after that? Mom will look, see, there you go, exactly. Yeah, we're chucking it already. Mom would say, well, we have the eye doctor appointment at 9. It's at Perm. You're getting the gist of a one-a-day life. There is one thing. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? I, in fact, have some of the old calendars my mom used on the farm. Guess how many things are wedged into each square of a day? One thing, exactly. That's it. Wouldn't you love a one-a-day life? Wouldn't you love to say, we have an eye doctor appointment at 9. We're done. That's the day. I got a feeling from your smiles, you're not quite there yet. <laughs> but it sounds good, doesn't it? I want to get there. Now, I have a worry that when I get to the one-a-day world, one-a-day life, I'm going to forget if I did the one-a-day that I had to do that day, because I'm already forgetting things, but it will at least be one thing. <coughs> Sounds like our text, doesn't it? Martha was not in a one-a-day world, but Mary seemed to at least found a niche for a one-a-day life. And I think we'd all look and say, I like that. You know, the wonderful thing about this text, it isn't just a tisk tisk on you, Martha, and way to go, Mary, but really it's a text that focuses on Jesus, who makes that one a day possible. By how he goes to Martha, how he addresses her worries, how he's even willing to take her complaint and to turn her, along with Mary, into a one a day world. Let's go see how he does that for us, too. It should be simple. I mean, all we're asking is for you to focus on one thing. But that's hard to do sometimes. Let's put something on the stove. You got it here, saucepan, easy, low, stove, needs to be stirred. Stirred, just stir this. You have a seven-year-old. Oh, this looks like a great seven-year-old job. So you bring her over here. Honey, honey, come here, come here. Just stir this, just stir this. You gotta keep stirring. If you don't stir it, it's gonna scorch, it's gonna burn, it'll be ruined. Just stand here and stir this. Now mechanically, a seven-year-old can do this, absolutely. Intellectually, they can understand. Make the spoon go in a circle. This isn't that hard. How is this gonna turn out? Oh, by the way, she's gonna ask a question. How long do I do this until I come back? Okay, that's, that's all I do. You don't have to. How's this gonna turn out? I'm sure with your daughter, Great. She dutifully stood there and just mesmerized. She's going to be the next Rachel Ray, the next pioneer woman. She's just fascinated by this. I hope so. After all, it's just one thing. You have a 19-year-old son. He's going off to college or work or the service. And you said, you know what, let's give him the old car. You got a Civic like the one we just sold about two years ago with 225,000 miles on it. Great car. But you got to check the oil. You got to check the oil. Don't you have one thing for him to do? Now, son, check the oil. You gotta do this every week. Don't worry about putting in air fresheners. Don't think about putting in new lights. Don't worry about a stereo. It doesn't have one. Check the oil. And I'm sure he did. It's just one thing. You can see God saying that thing to us. Just one thing. I want one thing out of you. Make one choice. But maybe we put up our hands and say, Lord, but I don't have a one a day life. There's so many things going on. This summer, I bet in May, you had a perfect plan for this summer. You had, we're going to do this and this, and we're going to relax, and we're going to, oh. And then somebody got sick in your family. And all those plans went out the window. And all that time you were going to relax is now spent at a doctor's office, or in the clinic, or going back for tests, or waiting for this. And it's a long way from a one-a-day world. 
You did have the vacation, but you packed it so full of all the travels, all the doing and everything, and you got the pictures to prove it, that you came home absolutely exhausted. Long way from a one-a-day world. And there's Martha. And Martha is probably the poster person for us all, isn't she? Distracted, busy, oh, I'm sure she was stirring maybe three pots at once to get all this done. In a one-a-day world, invitation, we're Martha's. Mary has found the right thing, and we're still being brought in. And then, the wonder is how Jesus does it. Let's hear Jesus say his words to Martha. Martha, distracted with much serving, went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But he answered, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. You know, it's interesting that there's a couple of unfinished parts to this text. The first one is when Jesus says, one thing is necessary. Now he goes on and says, Mary has chosen the better part. It won't be taken from her. But when he says only one thing is necessary, wouldn't you like to stop him and say, what is that? He doesn't ever exactly say. I think we're supposed to figure it out, aren't we? Oh, being more like Mary, listening to you, maybe a little less banging and clanging and complaining, that would be the one thing necessary. Maybe the one thing that's necessary is really exemplified by the Jesus who invites us to see him. Doesn't he do some remarkable things to make that one thing not only necessary, but that one thing possible? The first thing I love about this text is that though it's a text that points to Mary, who's chosen the right thing, Mary never speaks. <coughs> though Mary's chosen the right thing, it's a text about Martha. It would have been easy to make it a text about Mary, wouldn't it? It would have been easy to say, and Mary alone heard these things. And Mary alone did the right thing. And Jesus said nothing to Martha, for she chose badly. I could have written that. But this text is better, isn't it? I think because we're Martha, this text speaks to us. Because Jesus spoke to her. The amazing thing is that the one who makes all things, makes one thing possible. Because he reaches out even to the distracted. Even to us who are Martha. And he does that knowing what's going to come. Jesus knows that Martha is going to complain. Do you like having people complain to you? Do you put yourself in the place where they can get to you to complain to you? Do you open yourself up without excuse or defense to their attack or at least their complaint? I don't. If I know, if I can see that someone's going to complain, I'm going the other way. And couldn't he have done the same? He knows full well she's going to come and complain to him. Yes, about Mary, but kind of to him about him. You're God, and you're surrounded by an appreciative circle of disciples. You really wouldn't even have to get out of that circle to get to Martha or to let her get to you. Couldn't you just surround yourself with Mary-like people and be heard and appreciated? Isn't it remarkable? He doesn't do that. He knows that Martha is going to come. Now, I don't know how exactly she did it, but having a saucepan and a spoon is just too easy. Martha must have had some actions. Let's assume that in the first century, you didn't have only words, but you had actions. Would make sense. Give it a spoon. It had to look something like this. Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work myself? I could see it. It would be a great VBS song with motion. I could really work this all out. It'll be the Martha song. I can see it. And he takes it. Isn't that remarkable? The God who says the one thing important is your connection with me knows that we might begin that connection with complaints. Isn't it remarkable that he still hears us? Knowing that, he listens to us. That he's a God big enough for us to complain to. That's an amazing thing, isn't it? He makes the one thing possible by being the God to whom we can come and is unafraid of what we do. Now, of course, he never has to justify himself. 
He doesn't have to explain that he cares. Instead, he's going to turn our friend Martha in the direction of Mary. But if we could jump in right at that moment, maybe we would say something. Remember, the question is, Lord, don't you care? Maybe we could help Martha out on that one. Does he care? He cares enough to be here. He cared enough to be the one who could honestly say, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And I know Martha at this moment, he looks like the one who's getting your kind service, but it's a lot more that he's doing than he's getting. He said there's one thing that's needed. And at first we say that one thing is our attention to him. That's true. But there is one much bigger thing that has to get done. Maybe John chapter 3 helps us. John chapter 3 reminds us that Jesus did not come to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. There was one big thing to do. And we left him to do it alone. Whether we knew it or not, whether we cared or not, he was left alone to do all that, just simply himself. And he did it not with a wooden spoon, but a wooden cross. He did it not with a saucepan, but with nails. And he did it alone. So Martha and all of us who say, Lord, don't you care? Maybe we could take a step back and say, he did. And has the marks to prove it. One thing that had to be done, saving of the world. And we left one to do it. And he did. And that's what he invites us to hear. I said that this text has two things that aren't finished. One is, one thing is necessary. Uh, what exactly is that, God? He leaves us to figure out. The other thing that's missing is, how did it end? Nothing got left out. If you look at Luke chapter 10, that is the end of the story. And Jesus simply said, Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. And the story moves on in an entirely different time and place. So how did it end? What did Martha do? Don't we want to know, what did Martha do? Well, here's my preferred ending. And we can talk about this as you're going out. What do you think Martha did? I'd like to think that Martha pushed the stove over, or the saucepan over to the side, laid down the spoon. I'd like to think she headed over to where Mary was. I'd like to think, now in my mind, Martha's the oldest and Mary's the youngest of the two. And I say that because I'm the youngest of two. And we youngest of two tend to choose the right thing. No, 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 don't call my sister in North Dakota. But anyway, let's just say that Mary is sitting there and Martha heads in her way. I would like Mary to be very gracious. I'd like her not to, when Martha sits down, to say, see, that would really be easy to say. We second born know how to do that. I would like Mary just to slide over a little and make room for Martha. And wouldn't it be nice to see the two sisters sit together and maybe a little nudge or whatever you did in the first century that says, glad you're here. And I'd like them to listen. Maybe Martha sits there with her arms crossed. Maybe there's an initial little, this better be good. And I'm sure it was. What it was, we don't know. Isn't that interesting? Would you like to know what Martha heard next that was worth it? We don't know. But being there, was worth it. Being with her sister was worth it. And being where she could hear Jesus was certainly worth it. And so, in the end, I bet they achieved a one-a-day evening. My parents had one-a-day days down perfectly. One-a-day. I'm heading that direction. Someday I hope I'm there. It sounds really nice. One thing to do, done. But maybe we are. You're not in a one-a-day world yet. You've got so many things to do. But maybe when we're thinking about the so many things, when we're busy with the, even the mindlessness of stirring a saucepan or checking the oil for the hundredth time, remember there's one thing that really matters. One thing was done. He saved the world, and we left him to do it. And one thing remains. Remind ourselves of what he's done. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
In our prayers, we uh, celebrate with Leah Nelson and Troy Bertram, who were married here yesterday. One thing that gives pastors a little thrill is when a couple that was just married shows up uh, the next morning, and here they are. Congratulations to you. Uh, we pray also for the sick, for Bill Kleinman, husband of Sue, hospitalized, for Grant Wilkie, son of Sue Kleinman, um, recovering from surgery, for Michael Strunz, hospitalized, and uh, for Andy Permentier, a relative of Janet Pipcorn, who is ill, for Janan Leemacher undergoing surgery on, on the 25th. We pray for our synod in convention down in Florida. Uh, Steve Zomer is down there representing um, our, our circuit as a lay uh, a delegate. We pray also for our missionaries. Please stand for prayer. Deliver us from being anxious over the cares of this world, O Lord. And hear the prayers of your people, that we may know the comfort of your peace in all circumstances. Blessed Father, we have found favor in your sight, and you have accomplished all things for our salvation. Hear us on behalf of your church, that those who have been baptized into Christ may live in him and make known your love to the world, that many may be the sons and daughters of Abraham and Sarah by faith. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, from infancy you have shown your goodness and made known your mercies new each morning. Be with the aged and infirm, those in nursing homes and those caring for them, that they may neither be alone nor in need as they approach the twilight of their lives, but know your comfort and care at all times. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Lord, you made all things and gave us dominion over all you have made. Keep us from receiving your gifts with ingratitude and help us to take responsibility for using them for your purpose and glory. Make us wise in the stewardship of all your creation, that we may preserve all you have made and that this good earth may be fruitful for the needs of all people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Gracious God, we live in a land of great abundance, and we carry great responsibility for the good things of this nation. Bless all who make, judge, and administer our laws, and guide our leaders to know your ways and to follow them for the good of all people. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Saving Lord, we give you thanks for the blessings shown to our synod, for the faithful pastors and leaders of our church, and for the faithful support of your work here and throughout the world. Bless the delegates and leaders of our synod now meeting in convention, that they may deliberate wisely, not departing from the gospel, and elect people who will faithfully exercise the responsibilities of the office we entrust to them. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate Father, in your mercy, you behold all people in their needs. And by your grace, you supply all that we need for this body and life and for everlasting life. Hear us on behalf of the sick and those who suffer, the grieving and the dying, especially those we've named, those we name in our hearts. Help them all to rejoice in their sufferings for the sake of Christ and give healing and grace according to your will and until you deliver your people to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Everlasting God, you have made known the mystery long hidden and revealed the glory of the gospel of Christ in us. Bring us and all the saints through the changes and chances of this mortal life, that we may be presented by Christ to you as those whom Christ has made holy and righteous and fit for eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, you intended marriage for uh, the mutual joy of husband and wife, and for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. We pray the same for Troy and Leah, that it would be a great blessing, and for all the marriages of our church as well. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. All these things, O oh Lord, and whatever else you know we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him in, into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This too as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you've given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage that on the day of his coming we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Phil Zastro, on behalf of the LCMS Youth Gathering in the Twin Cities. Good morning. Good morning. This past weekend, the uh, LCMS Youth Gathering uh, was at uh, Minneapolis. The theme was Real Present God. Maggie Evanberth and Kathy Astrake uh, attended, and I'd like to share briefly with you a couple of the highlights. Along with um, the mass event that included Toby Mack, I Am They, and the Skit Guys, uh, there is breakout sessions throughout the entire day uh, that uh, dealt with issues that our youth uh, are dealing with, bullying, uh, depression, mental health, and different uh, things like that. Uh, our, the, the week's theme was uh, based on Psalm 46. I especially learned that our youth, uh, youth struggles are real, our youth troubles are real, and their faith questions are real. However, we know that God's presence is real as well. He is our true refuge and strength. <clears throat> we all know that God is a powerful God, but just as important, he is more than that. Our God is a personal and caring God. We would like to share our, our experiences with you this past weekend after the service. We have a little booth in back. We even saw a guy give, a, uh, give someone in need his shirt literally off his back, which was kind of neat to see. In closing, we have opportunities here at Good Shepherd to witness and mentor our youth that our God is a real present God. Thank you.